Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and for today's video we are going to be doing fall book recommendations. It is the fall time. I'm obsessed with it. I love fall so much. It's one of my favorite seasons of the year. My last video was a fall TBR where I kind of listed out all the books I wanted to read for fall. So this video is going to be the books that I recommend for you guys to read for fall if you are looking for some fall book recommendations to get you into the season. I have standalones, I have series, I have fantasy, romance, science fiction, thriller, mystery. I have it all girl. I don't have the physical copy of every Every single book that I'm going to be talking about so the ones that I don't have the copy of I'm gonna make sure to put the cover on the screen so you guys know which books I'm talking about exactly in case you want to go pick them up for yourself and read for fall so without further ado let's get into the video so I'm first going to start off with my fantasy fall book recommendations when I think of fall I don't know about you guys I think of fantasy immediately fall equals fantasy in my head and my mind and I just feel like the fantasy recommendations I have for you guys are top-notch the first one I have is the six of crows duology by Lee Bardugo the first book in the series it's six of crows and then the second book is crooked kingdom I have the black sprayed edges and the red sprayed edges I absolutely love this young adult duology I think it's absolutely amazing it is part of the Grishaverse which the first book in the Grishaverse is shadow and bone in that trilogy but you don't have to read shadow and bone to read six of crows I didn't do that and I felt like I I was able to understand what was going on in the book what was going on in the world and from what I hear most people prefer Six of Crows over Shadow and Bone so if you really just want to understand the crows and get into this don't read that jump right into this I think you'll be perfectly fine so Six of Crows takes place in Ketterdam and it follows our main character Kaz Brecker who is recruited by a merchant to break into the ice court and retrieve a scientist who created this very addicted drug that everybody is highly seeking because it can control people and it is just a really big deal so Cass puts together this team of crows to kind of break into this ice court, break into the security prison, and retrieve this scientist. It is such an exciting heist. It is so incredible. I love the characters in this book so much. It is told in six different point of views. Every single one of the crows, every single one of the characters gets their own chapters and it alternates throughout the books in their narration and their voice. And I think that at first that can be very jarring because it's like, oh my gosh, how am I supposed to remember six characters? But I think the way that the author writes it is so good. And I feel like I fell in love with every single one of the characters because sometimes when you read books where it's like so many different characters obviously you care about one and not the other but that's not the case here like I love them so much the Grisha world is so exciting it's so compelling the world building is amazing the magic systems are amazing when I tell you you will be so engaged and so compelled to be in this world there is also a little hint of romance in the series but it's so subtle and it's kind of like you're being fed crumbs but it's so good every single time you get a piece of it and I love the backstory that you get with these characters as well and I love how they all kind of really grow and form this bond with each other that's so special it's definitely giving more of that found family vibe and I really think this is an amazing book to start for fall if you haven't already there's also a Netflix adaptation that kind of blends the plot lines and characters from Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone and getting to see the crows in action and getting to put faces to the crows the actors was so fun I love this story so much I probably will never stop talking about it the next fantasy recommendation I have this is my pride and joy like this is genuinely my pride and joy and I love these books so much and it is no other than the Legendborn cycle by Tracy Dion so the first book is Legendborn and then the sequel is Bloodmark let's take a moment appreciate these covers they are beautiful they are gorgeous I think I'm actually going to die when I see what the third cover is going to look like for this series this is also a young adult fantasy series and it follows our main character Brie Matthews she attends a kind of honors program at UNC Chapel Hill after losing her mother and in kind of processing the grief and the loss of losing her mother she kind of starts to see these magical attacks happening on campus but not everybody else can see it and she's kind of like why am I seeing this and nobody else is seeing this she comes to find out that these magical attacks are connected to the secret society on campus called the Legendborn who are descendants of King Arthur's knight in the round table and she decides to infiltrate the society to kind of get answers as to why she's seeing what she's seeing but in doing so it leads her to discover that she has powers of her own she learns more about her family and her past and she also learns that there is more to the world than she knows I love 
this series. Like, I cannot tell you how many times I have recommended this series to so many people. I've recommended it to my sisters, I've recommended it to friends, and now I'm recommending it to you guys because you guys, if you have not read Legendborn, you need to read Legendborn. The series is inspired and loosely based off of King Arthur and the legend of King Arthur, but it also tackles very different themes such as grief, power, and race, and Tracy does such an incredible job drawing you into the story, and I just have to say that our main character, Brie Matthews, is hands down one of the best protagonists that I've ever read about. She is such a powerful young girl and the things that she goes through, the way that she's able to show up for herself and show up for other people and just how powerful she is as a 16 year old girl who is going through a lot in a very short amount of time. I just applaud her. Does she always make the best decisions? No, she's a 16 year old girl. But one thing about me, if there is somebody in Bree's corner who is rooting for her, it's going to be me. I love this girl down. She can do no wrong in my eyes and I cannot wait to see her fully develop into the character she's going to be and fully kind of create her own lane for herself because there are so many people throughout the series telling her this is what you need to do this is what you need to do and I cannot wait for Brie to kind of step in and form her own path because when she does shut it down shuts it down she's finna shut it down I'm sorry, I get really hyped for Brie. Brie's my girl. And just like Six of Crows, there is another kind of hint of a romance subplot. There is a love triangle. Before you click off and you're like, I don't do love triangles, Caitlin. Like, no, no, no. Hear me out. It's not one of those love triangles where it's like, it's very obvious that one guy is going to be chosen and the other guy's kind of just left in the dirt. Like, the girl likes one of the guys way more. That's not the case here, okay? The love triangle is very balanced. It's done very well. More than just, oh my gosh, like, it's a romance. It's like, this is really good friendship between people. People. and I feel like whoever is chosen in this kind of love triangle I wouldn't care because I love all of them so much and I think that regardless of who gets chosen it's still going to work so Legendborn Bloodmark it is set in a college campus it is inspired by the King Arthur legend and it has an incredible magic system and world building so if you have not read this I think this is a great fantasy to read for the fall time so the last fantasy novel that I have to share with you guys is part of a series that I feel like I have not talked about on my channel at all and honestly I don't think I've talked about this book since I finished the last book in the series because I it was a lot let's just say it was a lot and that is an ember in the ashes by Sabata Hare and this is another young adult fantasy because I don't know what it is about the young adult fantasy but the writers and these authors just know what they are doing and nothing eats as much as a young adult fantasy the first book is called an ember in the ashes which follows our two main characters Laia and Elias so Laia is or Leia it might be Leia I'm gonna say Leia. I'm probably gonna butcher it. But Leia is a slave and Elias is a soldier under the Martial Empire. Leia lives with her grandparents and older brother, but when her brother is arrested for treason, Leia decides to work with some rebels to spy on the Empire's military academy in exchange for their help to rescue her brother. In doing so, she meets Elias, the school's best soldier who secretly hates the Empire and wants to be set free from its tyranny. Both Leia, or Leia, Leia, and Elias realize that their destinies are intertwined and things get real very, very quickly. If you are looking for something that is a bit more on the darker side, I think that this is the perfect one for you. This series had me in tears. This is a very intense young adult fantasy and Sabata Hare does such a good job writing the series and writing these characters. The character development that you are able to witness from the first book to the last book, the things that these characters go through, the trials and tribulations, the tests that they're put up against, the magic system, the antagonists, the villains of the story, everything is just done with so much care and thought. It gripped me from the first book. It's action-packed, it's emotional, it's riveting, it's dark, it's brutal. Good luck trying to catch a break when you are reading this book. It is painful but in the best ways. There's a character in this book in particular or in the series in particular that becomes more of a main character later on in the books and the kind of journey that she goes on is so crazy to see because when you read about her in the first book and then you see the way her life pans out it's just like what? Like it's a wild but she became one of my favorite characters and shout out to her if you know you know obviously there is a romance plot between Elias and Leia but it is not the main focus of the story and honestly you are going to be worried about so much other stuff than the romance like I was trying to make sure that my favorite characters are going to stay alive that I was like the romance is cute but like I'm trying to make sure my people don't die I definitely would recommend this fantasy for fall time if you're looking for something that's a bit more intense those are all of my fantasy book recommendations now we are going to get into some 
romance recommendations, aka my favorite to talk about. Because you guys know I'm a romance girly through and through. I will always read romance regardless of the season. And the first romance novel that I'm going to be recommending for you guys is Playing for Keeps by Becca Mack. This is an interconnected hockey romance series and there are three books out right now. There is Consider Me, which is the first one, Play With Me and Unravel Me, which just released earlier this year. And when I tell you guys, this is the series that got me through my first semester of grad school. I was struggling in grad school my first semester. I was so stressed out and reading the series really calmed me down during such a hectic time because it is the perfect blend of emotional but cute and cozy and steamy and I just feel like the way Becca Mack approaches romance is so wonderful. There are no third act breakups in these stories which honestly I really like because sometimes when there's a third act breakup it's for a really like not stupid reason but sometimes a third act breakup isn't really necessary because you know if the two people communicate and they are honest with each other then there's not a need to break up. Just because there's not a third act breakup doesn't mean that these characters don't face any difficulty or challenges or trials in their relationship. It just means that they're able to work together and I think that watching them work together and watching them go through the conflict together and not break up because of it is so special to see and I also think that you are able to spend so much time with the couple as a couple because you get to see them fall in love, you get to see them being in love and being freshly in love and then they may or may not have this conflict and then once they have the conflict they're still together so you get to see them work through the conflict together and then you get to spend time with them after the conflict you're just able to spend time with the couple so much more and I just absolutely love that about this series I also love that it's an interconnected series you're kind of getting to see the same characters and the couples and you know the other books in the series and there is definitely this found family vibe and found family trope because they're all just such great friends they're so funny like I love all of their personalities all of the guys are hilarious and their love interests are so amazing and I just feel like if you are looking for a very cute and cozy romance that's not going to stress you out you don't have to worry about some other girl drama you don't got to worry about no miscommunication trope you ain't got to worry about none of that you just want something cute light-hearted that is still emotional but like you're just gonna feel nice on the inside when you read it. I definitely think that the Playing for Keep series is the one for you to read. Definitely pick this up for fall if you haven't already. So the next romance that I am going to recommend is also a series, but I actually don't think you can read these as standalones because the way that the plot moves, it's very important that you read the books in order. And that is the Devil's Night series by Penelope Douglas. I have been hesitant to recommend this series simply just because Penelope Douglas is not for everybody. And I completely understand, I get that, I respect that, but for some reason, their writing just works for me. I love their world building. I love the way they write the setting of the books. I love the way they write the characters of the books and I just love the way that they push boundaries of what is okay and what is not okay and I don't know how but it just works for me. So the Devil's Night series follows our four main characters Michael, Kai, Damon, and Will. They are all best friends and they are also known as the Four Horsemen because they have a tradition where the night before Halloween, so October October 30th is called Devil's Night and that is a night that they kind of wreak havoc and mayhem in the town that they are in and one Devil's Night because they record these like crazy things that they're doing which are also kind of illegal they record them on like a burner phone and one devil's night the video and footage on that burner phone got leaked and three out of four of them ended up in prison and fast forward to present day and when the first book in the series starts which is corrupt all of them are out of prison now and they want revenge on the person they believed was the cause of their imprisonment so each book in the series takes place in past and present tense with one of the four horsemen and their love interest it is very intense it is a dark romance but it is very exciting to read. These characters are wild. The things that you will read in this series are insane. It is wild. I read them and I'm like my eyes are just like bulging out of my head because how are they getting away with this? How is this okay? I'm sorry I had to change my battery because it was dying but back to Devil's Night. The first book in the series is Corrupt which follows Michael and Rika and then there's Hideaway which follows Kai and Banks, Kill Switch which follows Damon and Winter and then Nightfall which follows Will and Emery. You never really know what to expect when it comes to these characters. It's very fast-paced. I read these on Kindle Unlimited. Do 
not be intimidated by the size of these books because they are long but they are worth it the past and present tense is done so well because the way that penelope writes it it's not like there's one chapter told in past and one chapter that's told in present it alternates in a way that i think is it works perfectly for the story there are also two short novellas so there's one in the middle of the series and then there's one at the end of the series my personal favorite in the series is kill switch because damon's character development and journey is absolutely unmatched like no other character in the story kind of goes through the development that Damon goes through and I personally think that Penelope put a lot more thought into his character compared to the other characters. If you like Halloween, if you want a little bit of dark romance and it's also interconnected with questionable characters but are they are very complex. So if you want to read this I think this is the perfect one to get into for fall as well. So after you read something like Devil's Night you might need like a cute fluffy rom-com and that is where The Brown Sisters by Tally Hibbert comes into play. This is also a interconnected series but these are books that you can read as standalones. So the first book is Get a Life Chloe Brown, the second book is Take a Hint Danny Brown, and the third book is Actor Age Eve Brown. So I absolutely love these books. These are adult rom-coms. These are the books that honestly solidified that Tally Hibbert is an autobi author for me. Like I gave all of these books five stars. I think they are so so good to read if you are in a reading slump. I think they're amazing to read. If you read something that's a bit more dark or brutal like maybe one of the fantasies that I recommend or again Devil's Night. I think these are good books to kind of just rebalance you and make you feel good again. They follow three sisters Chloe, Danny, and Eve and I just love that these series are about black women who are independent. They are educated and they are loved on so hard by their love interests. The men in these books, y'all, I'm not gonna get into it, but the men in these books, Redford, Zaf, and Jacob. I need them all. I need them all. They love these women so hard and I love seeing black women be loved on so loud and so hard and I think that these are so good read them. I love that all of the sisters have very distinct personalities and the title of the books is kind of like a play on the lesson that they learn or what people have said about them and it really comes full circle when you're reading the books how the title of the books kind of work within the story. And what I love about Talia Hibbert's writing especially with this series is that she does such a great job balancing humor and serious topics with each story and I found myself being able to connect with not only the sisters but also their love interests and I was laughing, I was crying, and I just had some of the best reading experiences of my entire life reading these books. The emotional maturity and intimacy and intelligence but also the steaminess of these stories is why I love these characters so much and why I gave this book five stars, why I gave this whole series five stars. I feel like my favorite definitely alternate between Take a Hint Danny Brown and Actor Age Eve Brown but honestly Get a Life Chloe Brown eight. So like I really love them all. I think they're all fantastic. If you're looking for a story that has a good bit of steam, have a good bit of spice but also has a lot of emotional intimacy as well, I think that these are the perfect books to start for fall. So the last romance recommendation I have is one that I have talked to my channel I think once before and I've kind of hinted at it multiple times but this is my favorite book of all time. I have read so many incredible books since I've read this book because I read this book when I was in high school. Nothing has touched it since then. This book definitely changed how I read as a reader. It changed the books that I read. It changed how I rate books. Like this book really changed me as a person and that is Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. I'm going to try not to cry when I'm talking about this book because this book means everything to me. So this book follows our main character Lou Clark or Louisa Clark who is a talented, creative, and fun woman who unfortunately loses her job. However, she finds a job being a caretaker to a paraplegic Will Trainer who recently was in a motorcycle accident and was paralyzed from the waist down. So Will is more moody and bossy and Louisa is more of a kind, awkward, quirky girl and they have such a powerful love story but they also have such powerful, especially Lou, they have such powerful journeys as characters and watching Lou find herself more and more with the help of Will but also just learning more more about who she is and her backstory and having Will kind of be in her corner rooting for her and rooting for her to be ambitious and rooting for her to live boldly. I just, it was a lot. When I read this as a 17 year old girl, I was able to see myself and be like, oh my gosh, I can connect
expect so hard to Lou. I feel like I am going through the things that she's going through. Like I'm having the same thoughts. This book is just so good, you guys. It absolutely broke me. I read it in high school, like I said, and it was the first adult romance book that I'd ever read. And I just remember sitting in bed at 2 a.m. bawling my eyes out because it was just so intense. And I had never read anything like this before. And Will is a character that absolutely just grows on you when you learn more about who he was, who he was before the accident, who he is now, why he is the way that he is. And their love story is so perfect because it didn't feel forced. It felt very natural. I felt like they developed a really strong relationship as friends. They got to really know each other. And then the feelings started coming in. It was just so realistic to see. Those are absolutely my favorite romance novels to read. And I also think that this book gave me a whole new perspective on life. And it definitely sparked a lot of conversation. I know that this book is controversial. There are people who have very valid opinions on this book. And I love listening to people who don't like this book, who do like this book, because I think the conversations that it sparks are really important to have. There is a movie adaptation, which obviously is not as good as the book, but I think that the people that they casted for Lou and Will were perfect. If you have not read it, read it, and then go watch the adaptation. It will make you cry even harder when you watch it happening after you read it. Like it hits different. Me Before You is amazing. And I think that if you are looking for it more of an emotional romance that's more serious and that's a little bit more than just a love story for fall, I think that this is a perfect book to read for the season. And if you hate it, don't tell me because I will actually cry. Those were all of the romances. Now we are going to get into my last three book recommendations. The first one is going to be a thriller. So the first one I have is the Deanna Madden series by A.R. Torre. And this is a psychological erotic thriller series that follows our main character, Deanna Madden, who is a cam girl who goes by the name of Jessica for everyone else. You meet her in the first book, The Girl in 6E, and she's a recluse who has this thirst for murder. So just a simple thought of physically being around other human beings will drive her to kill them. So to protect herself and to protect others, she locks herself in the apartment 6E. However, when she finds out that one of her clients is as dangerous as her, if not more, she finds herself having to leave her apartment in order to save a life. And when I tell you guys, this is intense. Half of the plot of the first book is just figuring out like who Deanna is, why is she the way that she is, what's her backstory, and then the other half of the plot deals with that dangerous character. And the other books in the series, Do Not Disturb, and If You Dare, follow different plots, but the books pick up right after the ending of the last one. I personally think that it is best to go into the series as blind as possible, knowing as little as possible, so you just get the full experience as you are reading them. So as y'all know, I'm a scaredy cat, but I was a lot braver back then when I I was reading this Deanna Madden series and when I tell you it was so interesting. I was at the edge of my seat. I was so scared to turn the pages. I was so gripped. Like when I tell you you are in this world, you are in this story, you are in this plot and you cannot think of anything else but what is happening next. The author definitely knows how to keep the readers engaged the whole time. It is very graphic and it is very suspenseful but if that's what you're looking for for fall I think this is a perfect book for you. I will say that due to the nature of Deanna's job with being a cam girl, there is a lot of mature content and there is also a romance that starts in the first book and kind of builds more as you go throughout the rest of the series. So keep that in mind. I don't see the series talked a lot about on social media. So if this is your first time hearing it, I definitely think it is one that you should add to your fall TBR. The next book I have to recommend is a young adult mystery. Here I go with the young adult. I don't know what it is, but young adult just be eaten. Young adult eats during the fall time. I read it in one of my reading vlogs and it is a Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I think that if you are looking to get into mysteries, if you're looking to get into thrillers, which you are like me and you are a little bit scared because you're like, I don't know what to expect. I highly, highly, highly recommend A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I think that the pacing of this book is really good. I think that it's a really good introduction to mysteries and thrillers. So A Good Girl's Guide to Murder follows our main character Pip or Pippa who chooses to investigate a murder that occurred in her town five years ago as part of her senior year project at school. So a girl named Addie was murdered by her boyfriend Sal, but her body was never found and Sal killed himself after her body was found missing. The police ruled it as a murder and the case was closed until Pip. She's determined to uncover the truth of what happened that night. And when I tell you that this book keeps you at the edge of your seat, it keeps you at the edge of your seat. If you saw the vlog, you saw the vlog. I was reading this and I was like, 
No! But this is such an exciting book to read because it is filled with so many twists and turns. And I love how you are uncovering the truth of the mystery right along with Pip. Like what she's finding, you're finding. And as she's putting things together, you're also putting things together. I also will say that I don't think this book is super predictable at all. And there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of characters in this mystery. So it's really exciting. You never really know kind of what to expect. It also reminded me a little bit of Pretty Little Liars. The way that I think Holly Jackson just writes this murder mystery is just so captivating and it's not done in a way that's overwhelming at all. I also really enjoy how you're not only just getting a narrative but you're also getting like the transcripts from the interview that Pip is conducting. You're also getting her journal entries or journal logs as she's kind of problem solving and trying to figure out like what's going on. How is this person connected to this person and how does all of this kind of fit into this mystery that she's trying to solve. It is also part of a series so there is good girl bad blood and then as good as dead and I definitely know that I want to get into these eventually at some point. Definitely read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder if you haven't already I think it's perfect for the fall time all right we have made it to the last book of this video and I am really excited to talk about this book because I read it last year and I feel like I haven't talked about it on my channel ever and I think this is the perfect time to do so and that is Kindred by Octavia E. Butler so this is a science fiction novel it is african-american literature maybe it's even fantasy I don't think that this book really fits into one specific category or one specific genre. So Kindred follows our main character Donna who is living in 1976 in Los Angeles, California but gets transported back to the antebellum south in time to save the life of a young white boy. She discovers that this boy is her ancestor and over the course of the novel Dana travels in time between her present life in LA and the antebellum south to Rufus the boy that she saved to save him at various points of his life. And I will say that the concept of time in this novel is so fascinating to me because you find out that like one day in present day is like years in the antebellum period so she can be transported back to the antebellum south and she'll be there for years in that time and then she'll get transported back to present day and she's only been gone for like a day but the way that she writes it is so good and this entire novel is just very compelling and she really brings you to the forefront with her depiction of slavery but I think that if you are interested in reading something that is more in like the science fiction realm that's a black classical piece of literature or any book by Octavia E. Butler, for example, I think that this is a perfect book to read. I know that there is a Hulu adaptation of this novel and I have watched it. I made it halfway through. I didn't finish it. I feel like when it comes to this book, it's one of those adaptations that I think should be followed pretty closely to the original source material. And I felt like the adaptation just made too many changes that I didn't personally love. I think the book is fantastic. Read it if you haven't. Perfect book for fall. So those are all of the books that I recommend for you guys to read for this fall season. I love these books so much. I think they will get you in the fall spirit and the fall mood. I feel like we have an array of so many different types of books to read. Hopefully you are able to maybe find one that speaks to you. So if you are interested in adding any of these books to your fall TBR, your fall reading list, please let me know in the comments down below. If you have any fall book recommendations, please let me know in the comments down below. I know I posted my fall TBR, but I'm a mood reader, you guys. If I want to read a book, I will read a book regardless if it's on my official TBR or not. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!